Thanks for downloading Grills. Please give us a follow on SoundCloud so you don't miss an episode. This is our final episode of the series. So if this is your first time listening, you'll be happy to know there are 24 more episodes for you to go and enjoy. But we will be back in the new year with series two. My name is Cara and I'm the editor of the Staff Canteen and for this final podcast I went to Adams in Birmingham to talk to head chef Tom Shepherd. He told me exclusively that he is leaving this month to go and open his first solo venture. So keep listening to find out what you can expect from his restaurant which will be in Litchfield. We also talked about chefs and TV and his good friend Stu Dealey on Master Chef Professionals. Uh, why Sat Baines is an idol of his and how much he's enjoying his career as it progresses. Um, so we've got, I'm here to see you today, we've got some really exciting news. So let's start with that first. So um, I'll let you tell everybody um, about your plans in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, um, obviously I'm Tom Shepherd, uh, head chef of Adams. And uh, yeah, I'm basically, um, a very exciting news, um, sort of coming into fruition next year. Uh, I'm going to become, well, hopefully going to become, if it all goes to plan, um, opening my own restaurant um, near to my hometown. Uh, and basically, yeah, it's super exciting news. Uh, it's at the time is right for me, um, without a doubt, to sort of go my own way and, and, and test the water on my, on my, on my, off my own back. And uh, yeah, I'm opening a restaurant next year, uh, sort of early to mid 2020. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited, super excited to be doing it. So, so before we get um, more details about the, your plans, yeah. why are you leaving? Why is now the right time for you to leave, um, Adams? I think it's not a decision that you come to lightly or quickly. To be to be honest, I think it's as, as, a, as a goal of mine since I became a chef. I always wanted wanted to open my own restaurant. So that was always that was always in the works. Uh, always in my ambition but when that happens I think you can never really put a time or a date on that um, but for me it was just a case of um, something happened within the family um, with with my dad actually dad taking over or, or buying his first actual jewellery shop um, in, in, in the city of Litchfield um, back, in, back in sort of March time of this year uh, I had no involvement in that whatsoever but when I actually went to see the sort of space uh, we sort of discovered that it was on sort of two floors and we discovered that there's a big big part of that could have been could potentially be uh, change into a restaurant and, uh, and as I said it was just a case of sort of going out going through those avenues very very quietly and, and, and sort of seeing if something was w- w- could could happen and uh, every sort of person we had in, had and come and take a look at it albeit a surveyor or a designer they were, they were sort of head over heels with the, with the, with the, with the site uh, and so were we and it moves quite quickly uh, then on in actually and uh, it just became you know a dream became a reality uh, time wise as I said before I don't think you can put a time time sort of frame on it uh, it just sort of hit it felt right uh, it feels right now and and, and, and you know we, we sort of we sort of really started to get the design work sort of completed now actually and uh, it just feel yeah it feels it feels right so it's definitely the right move for me uh, for next year yeah so um when you've worked uh, you know you've been head chef at Adams how, what's the what's the correct way to leave does it always does it feel a bit is it always a bit difficult? Um, cause yeah, it is, yeah. every chef is gonna at that some point in their career have yeah, to yeah, have to make that move. So I think for me it was a case of um, I mean I'm I'm extremely I'm extremely um, but yeah, I'm extremely I'm a respectful respectful person anyway, but I mean I'm extremely cautious and conscious of, of, of that of obviously handing in that news at a given opportunity or a given time. But for me I've always for my whole career I've always sort of put put to one side a time frame of where I'll be and what I'll do in that you know, in, in a certain restaurants or you know, for instance if I was at SATS if it was to be the development chef I always sort of said no let's reevaluate after a year and then see if, if, if another year makes sense or if it, if, if it doesn't and then we can move on. But when I came to Adams, it was like a homecoming for me. I mean, I'd gone around the country and up into, up to the Lake District and London and obviously then Nottingham. And for me, it was a case of coming home, seeing the family. So it was a, it was a double-ended sort of sword in essence for me. It was in, in a good way, you know, it was a case of I can come home, sort of hopefully buy a house, which I wish we have done. Um, and then, uh, and then equally started a family, and, and you know, for that it was that was that was the sort of personal and professional limits. But with Adams, it was a case of I had no time limit attached to that at all. I had I was very much focused on the job that we sort of had to do here. And you know, I've been here two and a half years, and uh, yeah, for me, I, I always said to everyone coming up, I'd, I'd love to just devolve the food and, and, and then sort of put Adams put Adams on a, on a, on a bigger scale, on a bigger map, if 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 if, if it was allowed to do so. And uh, you know, and obviously my first year, I know it's obviously customer based more than professionally based, but the, the TripAdvisor thing, I sort of always hold in that high, high regard. I don't particularly, I'm not a massive advocate of, of TripAdvisor, 
but for me to get sort of second in the first year, then first obviously last year with the fine dining scene of England, I thought that was a huge, a huge sort of coup really for me. And I think that was a case of my my biggest fear for Adams or me coming on board was was me, you know, not wanting to reinvent it. I just wanted to sort of evolve evolve the product. Uh, if I reinvented it, it was it was all an extremely successful restaurant. So that's the last thing I wanted to do was create another one. I didn't think that needed to happen. I think I just needed to evolve. The, the, the product that was here, which I, I feel I have done, and um, and you know, done it in in, in, you know, in a good way, and I think the uh, the customers have really related to that. And yeah, that was it. And, and, and there was no time limit on, on me on me leaving uh, at all. I said this 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 opportunity and a personal note so presented itself. And um, again, I very vaguely looked into it, and as as time has gone on, it, it seems to be the right move. So um, I was very open and honest with Adam at the very very first light. Uh, I didn't even hand him my notice. I said, listen, this is the this is the sort of avenue that I could potentially be going down. I don't want to fear you at all, uh, but you know this is something I'm going to concentrate on. And they, they were great, actually. They were. He was in the same. He was in the same sort of boat. Uh, at my age, you know, now at 30, 31, when he was at that age, you know, he was at Glenapp, uh, up in Scotland, and him and his wife wanted to open up a restaurant, and they did. And so he, he sort of knows how I feel, and I think, uh, I think, if, if I'm being honest, I think he sort of potentially expected it as well uh, in, in the not too distant future. He may have come a little bit early but I think he expected it if I'm being honest. So, so do you think um, Adams was the final kind of step for you in learning everything that I know obviously you'll continue to learn but do you feel like now you know enough to run your own not just restaurant but business? Yeah 100% you put, you put it perfectly I think my, my learning sort of John Freeman always said at Sats, he, he could sort of tell that I sort of, I almost sort of went to Sats as my finishing school and it was, you know, what a place to do that and it was a great position to be in as well when I was at Sats with the development, you know, I really I did, did have time on my side to sort of almost hone in my own skills, uh, but, but, but obviously working for, for, for Sat as well and um, that was it and a lot of people said, question that move as well, like my friends were saying, are you ready for a head chef's job now? And I just, I just wasn't quite ready, I felt like, you know, and don't do anything until you are ready, you know, I mean, don't, don't allow sort of pressure and age get on your side, I couldn't, you know, it doesn't matter. For me it was a case of really sort of, um, really ensuring that I, I was got all that, all that sort of armoury army within me to then go and take a head chef's job and, and, and that was it and even even when I took the Adams job I had I had a couple of people a couple of investors who were interested in potentially putting my own, in my own restaurant but again I didn't have the confidence to sort of take that money and do my own thing I wanted to sort of have that safety net of, 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 of an owner of a, you know of a, of, a, of, a, of a head chef which he was obviously which Adam was obviously then and of that support and that, that's what I felt I needed really and, and for me that was the case if I felt I've had that support now and I have proved myself sort of right and wrong in different ways you know um, coming on board I potentially could have opened my own restaurant two and a half years ago but I'm glad I didn't I'm glad I'm doing it now and I do very much feel ready much more ready now and I've obviously seen a business and being in a head chef's position is completely different obviously it's completely different professionally in the regard of your your your, your manning a full a full team and it's not just professionally it's personally as well you get to know I've got to, I've got to know the parents of these guys downstairs you know I've been contacted on social media so for good and bad things, you know, and, and, and it always happens, I suppose. But that's, 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 that's the thing for me that is very, very new to me, and I'm sure that will continue when I open my own place. But, you know, I am going in as a, as a chef, you know, I'm still, I'm, I'm not going to become a businessman and sit behind the sort of desk. I'm, I'm going to be forefront in the kitchen, yeah. and I'm going to try and incorporate a team that will sort of help me run the business. You know, yeah. I'm not going to do it, do it single handedly. I'm going to try and ensure that I, I employ like minded people who, who want to be a part of the family and, and part of the structure of of what the restaurant will become and um, you know, and, and sort of create a legacy in, in our own right together as opposed to just a one-man band. Yeah, yeah. And obviously you've worked for some very renowned chefs, they have their own style. Mm. How easy is it going to be for you to find your own style and do you have already a vision in your mind of kind of your, your menu and your dishes and how that's going to flow? Through the restaurant, I think I have a, um, I definitely have a, have a, have a sort of um, outlook on ha and how I want the, how I want the, the sort of beginning of the restaurant to be and how I want the food to sort of be. I mean, I've sort of done that here. I've, I've you know, I said I have evolved the food, but it, it, it is all my sort of concept, it's all my sort of feed. I mean, I'd be silly if I completely and utterly um, promoted only my food here because then, in essence, if I was to open my own place or move, then I did the same food there. It would be it would be another Adams, wouldn't it? So I mean, that would just be the wrong sort of move to do. So. From my point of view, I've been very cautious of that being here, and uh, as I said, for both for both reasons, I've wanted to ensure that the customers understand and know that this is an Adams 
uh, product, and equally when I move on, it, it won't be. It'll be it'll be it'll be my own product completely. But there'll be certain huge influences from your time here, uh, simply because it, it has to be it has to be that. Um, but no, it, it, going going back to what you said about the food, I mean it's it's, it's going to be led by customers, and I, again that business mind is changing. I, I, I'm I was speaking to Paul Foster the other day, and it was it was enlightening simply because I mean he's extremely supportive. But it, but on, on top of that, he was sort of saying you know your your food will change if you if if if, if you would like to adapt. Uh, you know, to the customers, and that's exactly what I'm, I'm in a business now. I'm not in a place where I just want to promote me and promote the food and try and look on Instagram. I couldn't, I couldn't really give a hoot about that, to be quite honest. I just want to, I want to ensure my customers are happy. That's it. And so, for instance, if we're opening Sunday lunch, we're we doing a classic. I mean, I'm a massive, I'm a massive, huge fan of Sunday lunch. I don't think there's enough places doing it well, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty positive like, we can do it really, really well. And if we do it at a really good sort of affordable price and, and, and get these customers in wanting to sort of have a Sunday lunch proper, you know, all, all, all the works on a Sunday lunch, you know, if that becomes really, really popular and almost it becomes like a Sunday lunch sort of venue, I'll, 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 happily, I'll happily do that, do you know what I mean? It's because it's, you, you've got to become, you've got, I'm sure you've got to become, well, that's how I'm going to approach it, you've got to become really susceptible to change and, and, and really happy to sort of, to sort of adhere to your custom, custom base. So I'm, going, I'm, I'm very open to do that for sure. You so. don't fancy taking your Sundays back, no? No, no not at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I suppose business comes first. I mean, yeah, down the line, I may, I may change and think, you know, book of this, I've done three years of Sunday lunches, I want to spend time. But that, that's obviously when your family, you know, your family in, in, in the work, in, in, in the working environment becomes one and, and they, they, you know, then you start promoting within and having yourself a head chef, et cetera, I suppose that's what happens with that. And they can look after the Sunday lunch, I suppose. But, uh, <laughs> but no, that's it. But no, I definitely with, with the food, I've got, I've got a layout at the moment of, of what I want to open it with. But I'm very, I'm very, very open to that changing or, or what I say, sort of adapting to the customer base if it needs to. Um, where I am opening, there's not really, well, there's not really anything like this, which we're going to do there at all. So I'm really hoping it's sort of, I've got a, I've got a good, a good feeling in my heart that, on my stomach that hopefully the, the people in of Litchfield will, will welcome a, 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 you know, this, this type of restaurant in uh, in Litchfield, uh, the first time for that to happen and, and, and if the product's right from the get-go I think they'll, they'll almost adapt to us as opposed to the way around, hopefully. So if you're describing it to the people of Litchfield, what type of restaurant yeah, yeah. is it? It's, uh, it's, listen, it's a, it's a, it's a family, it's a, it's gonna be, we're going to try, try and create a family atmosphere within the kitchen team. And then, so outside, it's going to be in, in, in the restaurant. We're designing a really comfortable, relaxed environment. Uh, the kitchen's a complete glass kitchen, uh, open ends, both ends. So it's going to be a very, very approachable, uh, easily viewing sort of kitchen. So you're going to feel part of the whole experience as you walk in. Um, but yeah, it's a small 32 cover restaurant. Uh, we're going to do, yeah, just really, really focus on the comfortability. You know, get, get, get these customers in and, and they're going to feel relaxed. It was food at the end of the day. It's not, I don't want them to. I don't want them to feel all stuck up and stuffy. I just want them to feel really open, really relaxed. And we're going to get food that, that you know, that they, they, they hopefully they're going to be impressed by. But again, it's going to be a real refined version of, of, of sort of nostalgic, comfortable food that they can relate to, but they probably haven't seen it delivered in a certain way. So, in short, yeah, it's creating a real comfortable, safe, comfortable atmosphere where they can just feel feel very, very happy to be a part of. And the food they have are going to sort of hopefully blow their mind in essence of flavour uh, and, and technique and, 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 and extremely approachable uh, and that's it really and it's, it's sort of a restaurant I want to come back to you know, obviously I want to create a restaurant where they, they're going to celebrate their, their occasions if it's anniversary birthdays whatever it may be uh, obviously I want to create that and I want that vibe but equal I want I want people who just who just fancy a really good night out and really good solid solid food and solid cooking and, and flavour that's, that's what I also want to produce as well is have a good mix of mix of sort of sort of um, um, you know, um, customers that they're going to enjoy it for different reasons. Well, I mean, it it sounds like you've got a real clear vision of what yeah. you want to do. What are you most scared of? Um, every single night when I close my eyes, I think about something different, and it's <laughs> it's bizarre because the stuff that you think about is just like. So I've been thinking about <laughs> I've been thinking about things. I mean, today, so if it, that this morning, for instance. So I've got, I'm on the phone to Western Power. Uh, because we don't know at the moment if there's going to be enough power to, to sort of run the, run the restaurant upstairs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I mean, this is, so I'm sat here in Adams. This is a three, three floor building. So we've got obviously bottom, middle, and then the, the top floor is obviously the restaurant. Huge, huge outlet. They had to, they had to, they had to get, they had to run all, all electric from the main road and also the water fountain that's about 100 metres away on Victoria Square. Okay. So then downstairs, I was speaking to Adam today about Western Power. 
and he was like, oh yeah, let me show you this. And there's this pipe at the back of the, the back of the kitchen, which is literally about, I'm not, no word of a lie, it's about three inches thick. That's about 250 megahertz of power that's continually running through to the kitchen. And he was like, oh yeah, you know, if you, if you need the three phase, you need this, 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 and this. And obviously now tonight I'm probably gonna have a sleepless night because thinking about electric, electric, you know, electric <laughs> issues. But there's, there's loads of stuff. I mean, it, you know, at the moment it's, it, the restaurant's just a shell. Uh, so again, it's 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 you know, give me a bag of ingredients and I'll, I'll I'll create something you never never thought was there. But from a designer's point of view, all I'm seeing now is just sort of open workshops that are going to become a restaurant. So I'm a bit like, what the fuck's that going to happen? Do you know what I mean? It's on two different floors. It's we've got like a bridge element to the restaurant that's going to be sort of, there's going to be a back and a front room as well. And it's just sort of visualising all that to come into fruition is exciting, but also quite quite fearful. But then, I think my biggest fear is when we're actually ready and it's open. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, now I need to start paying people's wages and the fear of getting enough people in to yeah. make, make that happen and making sure we've got a safety net of, 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 of a figure that will obviously allow that to sort of happen. And that all that, because it's all brand new to me. You know, that, I don't think you can, you can't teach yourself that. You know, I mean, that's just something that you have to go head on when, when you're in the business. And I'm fortunate enough, I've got friends and family around me who will very, who will very much support me in that. But again, it's 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 the unknown, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I don't know how, how successful it will be. I mean, I'm obviously hoping it's very successful, but Litchfield isn't an area where they've they've got restaurants like this in abundance at all. I said it's, it's only the, pretty much the first one. So, are they ready for it? Will they will they will they, will they take it on? Will they sort of be cautious with it? I don't know. So we're going to yeah. have to wait and see, really. But we're starting small, and then with the ability to grow. So. Okay. And I suppose as a young chef where you're like, I want my own restaurant and yeah. it's going to be so easy and oh, yeah, so naive. Yeah. Whereas, and then it, you start doing it and yeah. you realise how, oh, time, how yeah. many elements come into play to make it work. So Big time. Yeah, big time. It's, yeah, like you just nailed it when you are, you know, oh, what are you going to do when you're older? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have my own restaurant. It's, it's, of course, it's never that easy. I, I knew that. But then equally, when you start going into all the logistics and you start understanding that how many different, different what would you say different puzzle pieces go in to make that picture it's like fucking hell man this is it's <laughs> like shit there's a lot of there's a lot of people you know get need to be involved with this and it's yeah uh, again I, you'd be very naive of you you know to think that but equally i think it, yeah, you can be as naive as you want i think when he actually starts to starts to sort of starts to work i think even that's still surprised you how much how much needs to be done before you open those doors and i think yeah, it is quite is quite sort of is quite worrying i suppose in one respect but as i said it's it's a dream and it's sorry i'm not trying to make you more no worried. no no it's on. yeah you got me I'm on my mind's up there now um but no it is it's it's, it's one of those it's it, 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 listen i've wanted to open my own restaurant uh, it's as simple as that and i think if, it, if i stay very focused on that if it, you know, if, it, if, it, if, it, if I do hit a roadblock and it's, it isn't feasible, then I'll, I'll hold up my hands and say I tried it and that, that's it. But that, that's at the very back of my mind. That is, I think if, you, if you're focused and you're wanting to drive forward and, and, and create create something that you've dreamed of, I think that's that's the best best thing to do, really. So, and that's what I do. And you mentioned the dishes would be quite nostalgic, like classic yeah. type, type yeah, dishes. Yeah, so I am quite a classic uh, over, over time. Like you said, like you said at the start of the conversation about you know you you, you you sort of develop yourself, and I mean I don't know what I don't know. I don't think you ever stop developing. Actually, I don't think you ever stop learning. I think you become. I think there's a, there's a there's a period of your career where you become comfortable in what you're serving. Yeah. And with that, I think with that, then the comfortability then becomes when you're so comfortable with what you're serving, not in a bad way, in a very in a very positive way. When you become so comfortable with what you're serving, I think you really back that back that. And you know that, that that's when your food starts becoming the best it can be because you are so relaxed. You are so behind what you are serving and behind what you are cooking. I think you, you, your product is is no better than that. I think you, when you are at that stage. I think that's incredible, and that can happen at any any age. I think really, um, I think as long as you're focused. But I think the more experienced experienced you are, the better that product will be anyway, and and the better your opinion of that product will be as well. But for me, yeah, the, the nostalgia is always something that I that I've always wanted to relate on. So even yeah. if it's just something that will you know, that springs childhood memories, not to the extent of like Heston with the, with the you know with with the, with, the, with his whole trip to Devon etc., or or even with Paul with his little. Uh, with, it, with Paul, Paul Ainsworth down at, at number six, which is an incredible, incredible restaurant, one of my best best restaurants I've eaten this year. He's obviously got the fairground, which is relation to his dad and his. I mean, it's incredible those little nostalgic things. And I think he said he said that was about seventy five percent of his of his of his dessert menu was just that. And yeah. of course, it is because he's created a product from that, and and people want it. Um, I would like to be able to do that over over time, but at the moment, I think it's just a case of just having those little nostalgic touches. If it's anything simple, if it's in the canapes or, or the snacks, or if it's in one of the courses in the tasting menu, it just brings you back, or you something you can relate to. We we're talking downstairs and doing sort of a, a pick and mix sort of um, marshmallow bag. We were talking about, and 
there's loads of different they're all this they all, all these marshmallows look the same but we were thinking about doing more different flavors like coca-cola bubble gum and things like that yeah there's a little takeaway sort of thing so when you take you take it away and it's like when you're eating it all, all these things are the same but again it's, oh, it's like coca-cola bottles and bubble gum etc little things like that it's just not nostalgia it's something they talk yeah. about after the, after being at the restaurant i think if you from a business or an advertisement type of thing i think it's quite important that you just try and create that as well because yeah. it, it spurs on spurs on sort of conversation doesn't it so and on that theme of cooking then did um obviously we uh, lost gary Rhodes yeah. a few weeks ago yeah. what impact did that have on you as a chef or, <coughs> or or did you see within the kind of chef community i think from a from a from a working point of view i think again just touching again with paul, paul obviously he worked there and, and one of the first podcasts i really i really connected with was, was one he did with uh, with one, another good friend of mine called Paul Paul Newbegin, and he um, he mentioned about a, a custard. Um, I think it was a, a, a no um, a bread and butter pudding. They used to do a custard. They used to do a particular custard with that dish, and he was saying that that was one of the first moments in his in his whole career that when he ate that custard, it was just or, or, the, or the bread and butter pudding was. It just took him into a different place. And that yeah. was a Gary Rhodes. Uh, so obviously, when I read his when I read his sort of um, his Instagram post and it was social media post, um, you know, last week about Gary, you know, he seriously he seriously had 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 a, had a reason behind sort of relating to Gary, yeah. and Gary was a huge 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 figure within his career. For me, I'm, I'm a little bit younger, um, obviously, so I, I wasn't able I, probably, I wasn't able to work within these kitchens at that time. But I know a lot of chefs of that era did, and, and obviously hold him in such massive high regard. For me, he was the first chef that I ever looked, uh, ever watched on telly. Yeah. Uh, that was literally, and obviously the spiky hair, he was a product within himself as well. So that was something for me where like, I, I, straight away, I sort of remember this spiky haired sort of young chef who was quite flamboyant, very classic. But I always, always remember watching it with my mum and my mum always saying uh, he uses way too much butter. I like always, <laughs> always, and I'll never forget is that. Is such a thing as too much Well, no, it's not now, not the day. I was just like, I was like is that, is that what's, what's wrong with butter? I was probably, I was probably sort of, you know, probably eight, nine, ten, eleven, whatever, however old I was. And I just remember them saying, remember mum saying, oh, do you like Gary, mum? You know, and she was like, yeah, he's, he's an amazing chef, but bloody hell, yeah, he's way too much butter. <laughs> and I was like, but he's butter bad, and you know, obviously not even knowing really what butter was that, that then, I suppose. But no, no, there's, there's definitely no, you can't, you can't use too much butter, and he's an absolute legend, in my opinion, for doing so, especially doing it on TV as well. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you probably did get a few few people at home sort of question it, but uh, that is what happens in in kitchens, I suppose. Yeah. And that's where the flavour comes in. So um, yeah, I suppose what what you don't know won't hurt you in one instance. But I think Gary really showed that uh, that's what needs to be done to in, you know to really uh, really pr- promote those flavours. But uh, that, 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 that's my memory of him. Yeah. Uh, that's why I didn't feel it was right for me to sort of really write about him socially because I think he, I think he affected. <laughs> more people in, in a bigger yeah. way for me and for me it was just a case of yes I pay my, my respects hugely to him because he was he was literally the first celebrity chef that I ever watched and, 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 and loved loved enjoy watching and, and, and potentially has, he has got something uh, you know an excitement in my career that I can relate back to but no he was uh, he, he was a huge 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 um, part of British British cooking and I think he seriously put it on the map in, in more ways than one so he'll be greatly greatly missed and, and a legend for sure so is TV something that <laughs> you want to do more of? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It would be something if, if if I was approached, I certainly wouldn't turn it down for sure. Um, but again, it's not something that I'm going to search for, um, especially in the new in the new realm. I think it's a case of my focus has to be my restaurant. Um, Good for a new restaurant, then, eh? No, massively. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If anyone's out there who, who, who <laughs> likes the look of it, then yeah, let's let's do it. Um, but no, it's um, it's one of them. I think there's, yeah, like we mentioned before we before we started speaking, I think there's a lot of avenues that you need to get involved in. I think to be able to get onto TV and uh, uh, listen. It, it, again, if if something was to come up, um, I would 100% be be ready for it, and I'd love to do it. Uh, obviously, I've worked very hard in this industry behind the scenes, and I'd like to be able to promote that on a, on a bigger scale. So, if a TV company or a program or whatever came about, uh, I would love to do it absolutely. Uh, but obviously, like you said, then it, to promote my own business more than myself uh, it is the priority, really. So, isn't it interesting how TV has become such a part of the hospitality industry? Don't you think? It's huge. Uh, it's, it's got. I don't think. I think TV is the byproduct, in my opinion. I think that the product is the customer, the consumer, uh, big time. I think it's. Um, I think that from a customer point of view, they they, they almost they've got they've got a real a real a real feed on the fact that they, they need to see they need to see celebrity chefs they need to see them and so it's like listen I'm gonna I'm gonna probably piss a few people off here I think there's a lot of, there's there's just no, say a lot of the wrong things I think there's some chefs who get TV time 
uh, not so much in like the master, not in, sorry, not in so much like the, the sort of side of the kitchen, the, the sort of known chefs. I don't mean that. I mean the, the chefs who are completely under the radar, no one's ever heard of, and they get certain air time that they they're not skilled at all. You know, they're not they're not, they're not skilled. They they've just maybe entered a competition. Unfortunately, they've been on TV, etc. They're not a skilled chef at all, and um, but they get TV time, and then in turn with that. Uh, customers on the outside just want to see them regardless if they're any good or not regardless if they cook good food it doesn't matter it's the, 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 their face is more important than what they're serving and for me I've got a completely I call it old school I've got a completely different mentality if I was to be on TV I'd want to showcase the best I can be in essence so and, and then, and then the, the, the fall from that is the essence of when they come to my restaurant they are getting a really good experience and I can back that up and that's why I sort of focused on my career more than the TV, the TV side, was because I just wanted to ensure that I was I had all the armoury to, to sort of when if I was asked, then I could really put myself across in the right best manner. I didn't want to just rock up on a TV show with no real skill set and just make myself look a bit of a tit. I wanted to go on there and really sort of showcase that yeah, I am, I am Tom Shepherd, and you know this is my restaurant, this is my skill set, and let that, that, that sort of go for it. Do you know what I mean? So. You can see why young chefs want a piece of that, though, can't you? Of course you can. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, yeah, if you were to ask me, you know, and if I was 19 again, and would I enter MasterChef? Absolutely, I would, without a shadow of that. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd want, I, think it's a, I think it's a fantastic thing. And one of my best friends, Stuart, Stuart's obviously entered it this year, and he was really, he was really cautious of entering it. He thought, you know, I'm a head chef, should I do it, should I not? And, you know, he, he's a little bit That's more Stuart, Stuart Dealey, yeah, from, from Wilderness, yeah. And he, oh, he's, one of, he's a, an amazing guy. I mean, we, me and him, just the moment we started, the moment we met, we just hit it off. And I think you get that with certain people. We're so like-minded. I mean, you know, I think he's a year younger than me. We're in very similar sort of stages of our career. And he, uh, yeah, he's an, an amazing talent. But he's a little bit more sort of under the sort of social radar, I suppose. And he just he's just gone in there and he's absolutely, I think he's down to the final six now, I think. And... Uh, I wish him all the best with that, but I think he's just going to. I think he's sort of right personality with it as well. It's come at a real good time for him. So, no, going back, I think if I was to do my, you know, with, with knowing what I do now as well, but going back in my career with the TV, I think you know when you were younger, I think it's a really good. I think it's a really good platform for a chef for sure. Do you think it would have changed you as a chef though if you'd have gone that route rather than the route that you went? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I think it's. I'd like to say no, not at all. I think, but I think there's going to be. I don't want to say change you forever. Of course, it wouldn't. I think, but I think the moment you get engaged with that type of thing, I think it's going to change you for a short term. I think you know, there's no two ways about. It. I think maybe it's going to change you until it runs out. I mean, not just talking chefs. I mean, you hear you hear some positive and negative stories come from you know from the from the you know the Love Islands of this world where they get these five minutes of fame and they come out and everyone wants them and want to open up open up bloody you know nightclubs for a night or whatever it may be. But then until the next series comes out, they're forgotten. Yeah. So that year of fame is incredible, but then they're just forgotten until the new crop of people, you know what I mean? So I think it's the same thing, uh, unless you really make your mark on something like that, I think it's just a year's, a year's worth of fame and that's about it. So I'd rather be, I'd rather be in the, say fame light, but I'd rather be in the light of whatever it may be for the right reasons. I'd yeah. rather be in there so I'm, I'm respected, for instance, as opposed to just being on TV for a year and having my little year of limelight. I'd like to be like, you know, like for instance, I take I take Sat as an example. You know, he's he he's the, the the legacy that he's left in essence of, of of a sort of an icon of the restaurant happened way before he was on TV. People wanted to work there because of who he was and, and what he did professionally. Now, when you see him on TV, it's just a nice sort of by, by, byproduct of what, what he is. And that's that that's a sort. Of, and same with Paul Ainsworth, another advocate from that. You know, he 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 was yes, you could say that sort of Great British Menu got him got him an appearance as it were you know got him to, to who he is facially and people could relate to him but his food in the industry got him where he was in essence of what we respected him for way before he was on tv yeah. and that's why I would, I would i prefer to go on that route i prefer to be respected and, and, and known for my for my profession as opposed to opposed to being on tv yeah, yeah. and as you man- mentioned sat so yeah. let's let's talk about your time with with sat what, what's that really like um, he's just listen. He knows his listen. He knows his products, man. He knows his products, and he, I think he's. When I, I touched on the icon thing, I think he's just someone who he just doesn't stand still. He doesn't stand still ever. He's super excitable. He's super passionate. Super focused. He's just got everything. And I think you know from from a, from from him winning obviously the Rue Scholar when he was a young man. I think I think he'll be the first to sort of admit that you know maybe he didn't have a, a background that potentially should win it if, if, if you say that I mean it's not the right term to say but he didn't he wasn't you know he wasn't 
schooled at these at these places but then you know he, he sort of took over at Saturn. he just made it all himself and he's made made that place what it is completely from scratch from, from himself obviously he talks about his team which is a massive part of that but it all comes from the leader I think and from my point of view he's just an extremely driven man I, I only worked there because of him I didn't even I didn't really go there because of the food I just wanted to work for an icon that's genuinely what I think he was an idol of mine yeah. uh, before going there and I just remember on my trial and I was just I think I was prepping um, pine yeah pine in the, in the, on the past and he just uh, he, 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 I think he went to the gym I think I missed him in the morning he came in the afternoon after the gym and uh, he just came in, he's just a bright spark straight away, bouncing all around the kitchen, saying hello to everybody. Obviously, Chief's like every other word in that kitchen. And he just came in, and obviously, I was a new face, introduced himself straight away. And I was a little bit sort of taken back, do you know what I mean? Because I was a bit like, hang on, mate, you're one of my idols, type of thing. <laughs> and you know, two days later, after a two day trial, I got the job, and I was just like, fucking hell, I'm working for this guy now. And that never really, never really left me, to be fair. I had to pinch myself a couple of times, if I'm being honest. I know he's not. I mean, certain, certain people holding me in different regard, you know, but for me, he was, he was one of my idols and I always wanted to work for him. I always had him in the back of my mind. I applied for a junior Sioux role about two or three years prior to that and I didn't get the job. Or I didn't get, I didn't really, I don't think I even got a trial actually. And then um, obviously I was in a different situation this time around and things happen for a reason. But no, he's, he's, a, he's a real, he's a hard work. He's there every single day, lunch and dinner. He'll be the guy who picks up the phones too if you, if you book as well. He's just, he's just everything. He runs the business, do you know what I mean? It's simple as that. Run the business for, for him and Amanda actually. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a joint, it's a joint, it's a joint thing. They, they both work as hard as each other actually. I think it's only fair to mention Amanda actually. But so no, they're, they're very extremely hard working and um, and you know definitely for me it's, it, I'll take huge positives of my time working there. But like you mentioned earlier from a business sense as well. I went there I went there professionally but I've also seen how to certainly run an extremely successful business with them as well. And they're forever growing. The whole place is growing all the time. And they're doing it for the right reasons. So yeah. Yeah. It's 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 hard but incredibly good. Yeah. So very different to then coming to coming to Adam. Massive, yeah, yeah, massive. It's a completely different different kettle of fish. Obviously, you've got a restaurant with rooms that's down 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 a, down a not, not not so nice scenic um, lane, Lenton Lane, to being in being in a you know in a fifty a fifty five to sixty cover restaurant with a, with a huge chef's table downstairs with a kitchen the size of my house. And uh, which is ridiculous, but it is what it is. Uh, and then the restaurant being huge as well, in the middle of yeah. you know a beautiful street in Birmingham, um, with a huge bar, you know, where people can come in and relax, have a drink, and then go through to the table. It's just completely different. It's a completely different thing and ethos, and that's what they do here. You know, we are we are packed every single day. Do you know what I mean, I mean, we, I literally this morning I just saw next week we're open for an extra day next week on Sunday. We've got 637 people booked next week. Wow. Do it, and I, I put an Insta post yesterday about saying about the savoury cooking suite, and we've got a savoury cooking suite. So we've got fish, garnish, and and, and and meat on those on those on those sections. Three of them are twenty, and one's nineteen, and they're cooking. You know, they they're going to be cooking for six hundred and thirty plus people next week. I mean, at this standard, bloody hell! I mean, I, I, you know, I can own. I'm 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 so proud of the guys downstairs. I'm so proud of them as well. You know, to be able to, to handle that pressure. On a daily basis, and to be cooking to the degree, in my opinion, they're cooking at. I think, we, in my opinion, we're comfortably cooking at that one-star level. At what, 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 what they require is that one-star, one-star level. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredible, it's an incredible thing. And, and, and for me, you know, it's a busy, busy place. The customers absolutely love it, and that, 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 that's what it's about. So, you know, in terms of Sats, you know, Sats is a more of a sort of family, family environment. This is a more of a working environment, I would say. That we get a whole, a whole array of different customers here. Yeah. A lot of do it Sats, but it's a different sort of ethos, I think. There. So. And um, I met you what four years ago, I think. Four, Obsession, ago, yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously things have changed so much since yeah. then. So, are you enjoying kind of the way your career is is heading? And I know I spoke to you at the Michelin Awards, and you were looking around quite wide eyed because you'd never been yeah. to the Michelin Awards. Yeah, that is, is that sort of thing? Is that do you still enjoy that? Is it still? Do you still get a bit starstruck? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, as I said, it's a mad industry. I mean, how many industries are really like this when you can just you can just get an invite to a Michelin Award and like you? There's, there's, well, you know, there's, there's three star chefs who are just walking side by side with you. Know I mean, I think Paul Paul Cunningham was there from Henna as well this year with, with Gary Gary Dawson, who was the first head chef of Fat Duck. It's just a bit weird. You know I mean, he's, he's like you. Know, and he comes up to me, he's like you're, you're Paul Prophet's friend, and I was like, yeah, I am. Yeah, he's like, how are you doing? And I was just like, this is fucking strange. But, you know, yeah, you just got the you know, Ashley Palmer Watts as well. He was like stuck, and it's like these these are big big people in this industry. But they've made they made the way. They're, 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 they're not just big people in certain in, in this industry for certain things. They're, they're, they've, they've made waves, in, in they've created waves in this industry as well. And uh, they they've got to be people who you hold in 
in huge regard as well. But you're standing right next to him. Yeah. You know I mean, it's, it's, it's mental. Um, and Do for you me, I still I, feel yeah. a bit like should should yeah. I be here? Yeah, you said that. Well, I saw you at the Rue, didn't I? I saw the Rue scholarship as well. And I, well, Adam was obviously Adam was meant to go, but couldn't. So I said, no, well, can I have to take your ticket? And obviously he was like, yeah, absolutely. I was like, and I was, I was really, I was really sort of confident and like, you know, I was just really happy and everything. And I was like, I can't wait for this. So I rocked up, and obviously there's literally the, the room was packed, as you know, like you could barely walk in. So I was like, excuse me, excuse me. I saw, I saw a couple of faces I sort of recognised. I remember seeing Mark Birchall, who, I'd, who I'd, I'd, I'd eaten it earlier that year and whatever. So I went over to him. I have sort of just hung on his shoulder for a bit. I was, I'm, I'm not exactly small myself, so I wish I was that, obviously, then. And then, yeah, it was just, and I was just waiting for someone who would sort of notice me and sort of say, oh, you're right, mate. And he was sat, ironically. And he sat at the Mitchell Awards as well. And he sort of said, oh, mate, yeah, what are you doing here? And I had a massive hug and, and we started chatting and... I'd just become a dad as well, only about a month before, so we started speaking about that. But no, it was, it was amazing. But no, there's definitely a place where I think over time that I've become comfortable. Um, but I'm not, that, I don't look at that as a negative. It's, I mean, the Mitchell Awards was an incredible. I mean, I remember coming back and just waxing lyrical about it with the guys yeah. downstairs. I mean, it was just, I couldn't care less if we'd won, lost, whatever. It was just the case that we got there. And I was, to be in the same room as those Adam people. Might. Yeah, Adam might, yeah, yeah, to be fair. Yeah. I'm speaking of myself there, to be fair. But no, it was. Uh, no, it was a case, of, for me, it was just a case, it meant, it meant, it meant, the invite alone was incredible for me. Yeah. So the fact that I was there and it was, it was able to, for my first time, be able to sort of turn up there and, and share the room with such incredible people and, and, and half of which are probably my idols as well, yeah. or, or very much so. I, I'll never change that. That will never change. I won't become, I won't, I won't pretend or, 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 or pretend that I'm, I'm, I've become one of those people. If, if I become an idol for the people, that's incredible, but they will still be held so high in my yeah. regard and uh, it would never feel normal to share the room with them for sure. Because so. people not in the industry wouldn't understand really what it's like to walk into that room. So. No, no, so I, think, I think they would be starstruck as well. I don't mean, from a customer, yeah, from a, from a, from a consumer's point of view, if they watch this, they, they know who these people are. If they were to turn up in that ta- into that room and see those faces, I think uh, I think they would feel the same, and I think I, I, the one thing question I always said, I was, uh, do you think Sat feels like that when he walks in? I don't know. I don't know if he does. Do you know what I mean, is there a chef out there that he would have to pinch himself? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? But for me, it's yeah. I mean, I saw Claire and Claire Smith, and obviously I saw uh, you know even Matt, Matt, you know, Matt, Matt Bay and and Johnny from from Core and Sat and Claude and Tom Kerridge and Paul as well. Paul Ainsworth is a huge icon of mine. I think he's, he's, a, he's a legend in this industry, and uh, yeah, it was amazing to share the room with him for sure. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah big time. Have a gossip. Yeah, well, yeah. So I mean, obviously a week to be fair. I just, I just try and catch on with what they're talking about, I suppose, which is normally just family and friends, I suppose. But no, it is. It's it's it's, it's amazing being a part yeah. of it for sure. So. And it's kind of sticking with that we mentioned before we started talking that a lot of people are moving at the minute. Yeah, do you yeah, still do you still enjoy a gossip? Do you still oh, enjoy yeah. seeing who's doing what and who's going where? It's always in. Yeah, it's like football. And it's like transfers. Do you know what I mean? You always get you always get ears like that. It's it's, it's time of the year. It's just uh, yeah. I mean, we, we spoke before. Obviously, the the, the, the Latimer change. Obviously, I've, I've worked there with Michael and. Uh, you know, with Matt being there for four years, which is one hell of a time frame of being there, and uh, you know he's done extremely well there. But then Steve, who I think Steve's a bit of a bit of a Michael Wignall sort of esque chef. I think you know he's, he's he's so he's so he's so highly skilled, and he's everywhere he's been, he's achieved huge things. Five rosettes and a star everywhere he's been. I think this is the I think this is the two star setting for him, like it was for Wignall uh, for Michael. I think it was the first two star he'd worked. You know, he he did gained obviously for his first two stars at the Latimer. I think Steve could potentially do the same. I think yeah. I think it's a to, to say it's a safe, a safe thing, I think that's that, that, that's doing it injustice. But I think it is a really good move for Steve and 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 for and for the latter. I think it's a real good move. And uh, no, you're right. Obviously, you know, we spoke earlier about Lee obviously leaving Pensons and Alan obviously being vacated from the Westbury. And um, I think Tom Aitkins is opening his new place as well. And there's talk of a little bits and pieces as well. But you know, it's exciting. It never sure. stops. It doesn't stop, does it? It's like a merry-go-round, <laughs> isn't it? It's just like people jump on and off all the time. Um, Keeps me busy. <laughs> it does, yeah. I mean, that's what I said to the start as well. It's just like, uh, hopefully, you know, you don't want to be, in your news that means so much to you, you don't want to be sort of lost in translation. But it doesn't, you know I mean? As soon as it's received, it's like, fuck it out. You know, he's doing this or he's moving there. It's exciting. It won't, it won't leave at all. There's always a byproduct of it. And I think, um, you know, mine will be the same once it's released. I think it's a case of just... That's interesting that he's leaving Adams and it's amazing that he's opened his own place and I'll probably keep a, keep an eye on that as well. So yeah. Yeah. I remember actually one of my best one of my best friend Adam Adam Degg who is who is head pastry chef of um, of the Hand and Flower. He'd started that job about a week or two weeks before I I came here and um, you were working together you two. Oh yeah, we started yeah. together and then then we sort of did a pop up. We did yeah. a, we did a series of pop ups. Uh, in London, uh, we just wanted to get a name out there, and ironically, that's when Adam actually we, we contacted we contacted each other. Adam did Adam said, well, "What's the whole thing behind this uh, behind these pop-ups?" And I said, "I just want to get my name out there." And he said, "Well, I'll come up to Adam's, and we'll have a chat." I said, "That's basically how it happened." Yeah. 
But no, I remember, I remember uh, me, me taking the job here, and then uh, my first day, I'd obviously put on social media that I was part of here, and then I remember Adam just te- Adam Dave just texting me and going, uh, um, Tom Kerridge said that uh, have you heard about? I don't, I don't think Tom 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 Kerridge knew about my relationship with Adam. They were best friends type of thing. I think uh, Tom Tom t- uh, Tom turned around to Adam. So oh, you know the you know the, the Birmingham lad who's gone to Adam's from Sats. So uh, Adam was like, yeah, he's what he's like, my best mate, and he was like, oh, but yeah, we better start watching that place now then. And I was like, he actually said that, and he was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, fucking hell, man. Like, <laughs> it's just what, what an amazing thing that you know Tom Kerridge would turn around and say, we better start watching Adams. Maybe it'll, it'll be interesting to see what Adams is up to now, type of thing. And yeah, you know, from the moment I came in here, two stars was on my was on my radar, one hundred percent. I just wanted to try and push, 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 trying to evolve, evolve, evolve. Yeah. And we had inspections. We were definitely inspected differently last year. Uh, and we had a senior inspection at the end of last year that we, we I sat yeah. down and had a had a conversation with, but. Um, but no, it was. It was. It was. That, 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 that's what it is. And um, I, just, I just remember that. I remember Adam sort of messaging me that Adam Degg, and I was just like, "That's mad. That is. Yeah. That's mad. That is." And hopefully, it's the same thing when I move on now. Hopefully, people start wanting to come and visit. Yeah. I, I, I love cooking for chefs. It's as simple as that. I really do. I don't feel. I don't feel anxious. Or anything. It's my product. If you like it, you like it. You're not going to please everybody. If you like it, you like it. Great. If you don't, you don't. That's yeah. fine. Do you know what I mean? It's as simple as that. I, obviously, I hope everyone does like it. But it's impossible to please everybody, isn't it? So, um, but for me, I love cooking for chefs. When when we cooked for Marco and um, and, and um, Pierre Pierre Kaufman last year, it was just like that's a bit surreal. Oh, it was weird, mate. It was it was straight. And then the order lunch menu, which I really fucked off about actually. Uh, I went to I went to in hindsight, I probably should have offered them a menu that we designed. But I came and had lunch, which is fine. But you know, when I came, it was Pierre as well. But when I saw Pierre, he came down the stairs. He was whistling. I just remember going. I went to look behind. I was like, whoever's whistling, can you shut the fuck up? <laughs> and they, the whole kitchen went silent. I was like, "What's it with you?" And the next thing, you know, Pierre comes down the stairs. I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, Sorry, chef. You know what I mean? But, you carry uh, on. You carry on. Whistle all you like, mate. Don't worry about me. You know what I mean? But uh, that's sort of what it was like. And he, you know, he thanked us very much and, and, and sort of said that he really enjoyed the, the, the tuna snack. I think he enjoyed, which was good and bad. I suppose it's a good compliment to have that. But then equally, had three courses after that, which he didn't mention. So I don't know if he did uh, enjoy it to the, to the fact. But he never I mean, says what he should say, though, does he? Let's no, be honest. To be fair, no, you're right, actually. But uh, no. It was great to meet them both, but no, cooking for chefs is, is amazing actually. So I, I hope I hope that becomes in abundance in my new place actually. So. so I think it would be nice to actually finish on accolades as you were talking about them. So uh, in uh, January 2021, yeah. am I going to be sat here talking to you about Michelin and rosettes? And is that on? Is that definitely the aim, or because you must want your own your own yeah. stuff? Listen, that. that Listen, that's, that's why, that's, I think that's why, regardless of what, what the accolades are, if it's Mitch and AA, whatever it may be, good food, trip advice, whatever, I think, you know, deep down, you always want things for yourself, don't you? Of course you do. It's only natural, do you know what I mean? And uh, I think that's where I'm at. I think, I think you know, with, with, with the second, with, with being first in trip advice, I really sort of come back to me this year. I thought, imagine if that was my restaurant. You know, we took, we took 200 bookings in the first day of, it, of, 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 of having that news on social media, and I was just like, 200 bookings, that's more than I'll do in a week. So I'm like, that's incredible. Do you know what I mean, if I take 200 bookings off the back of that, just for just for just, just for just for customers you know, raving about you, I was thinking, I, I need I need to do that for myself. Um, and that that, that 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 that's 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 the honesty about it. If I can be brutal, I'm, I'm being brutal. And I know a lot of chefs say, I'm not focused on this. I'm not focused on that. I'm not focused on which. I'm not, not going to give, much- right give you that answer at all. <laughs> I'll be, what I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a complete honest answer. And what it is is, I'm not I am not going to be open that restaurant cooking for anybody. I can honestly, honestly tell you that the only people I'm opening the restaurant and cooking for is the customers. That's why I said at the start of the, rela- start Sorry, of the conversation. Front of us is desperately trying to shape that discreetly. <laughs> don't know, yeah? Just finished. Negro- Negroni's at 12 o'clock. Oh, Jesus Someone's living the dream. Do you know what I mean? Wednesday as well. Jesus Christ. Hard week. Um, no, I, I can honestly tell you that um, I, I will be cooking for the customers and that's it. If what well, I find really interesting when I was at the Mitchell Awards, they said like they they mentioned so in high right, just cook for yourself, you know, cook for yourself. I don't want all this what you think we want. Cook for yourself. Well, that's exactly what I'll be doing. Yeah. I one hundred percent. But I won't be cooking for myself, but I'll be cooking the food that I want my customers to eat. If or I feel they they would like to eat, if they enjoy it, fantastic. If they don't, then I will adapt. I'll adapt for, to them. Like I said to you before, it's it's a it's a business. My focus is the business. It's not about accolades. I promise you that. It's about focusing that I can make a profitable. Uh, you know, uh, a, a, a profitable business that that, that, that is, is 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 a desired location for customers. That's all I want to create. If along that story and that evolution, that you know, in, an incredible thing happens that we get Michelin star, that's amazing. Yeah. That is absolutely. That, that is. I'm not going to be lying to you. That, I've obviously worked in. I've worked in eight Michelin star restaurants now. 
and you know, collectively and, and obviously I've worked in those restaurants to become them of course I have but as I said to you my focus is completely different now you know, retain, retaining the star here for the past two years is huge that was, I, I, I was, I, that was massive for me it was a huge fear of mine I don't. I do not want to lose a star on my own. On my own name, but equally, I certainly don't want to lose it for a business. No. For Adams, it's Adams. I'm losing it for. Don't know I me. Mean? And it is my food. So it, it, it was a real, a real fear, fear of mine. Every year it is. But no, for my own restaurant, the only focus is that. It's as yeah. simple as that. I just want to cook food that that is that is that, that, that they want to eat. I want to cook. Enjoy, enjoy it. Enjoy cooking that food. Enjoy serving those guests. And as I said to. Over the evolution, if I was to get three, four rosettes, five rosettes, amazing. If I was to get one star, two star in X amount of years' time, whatever it may be, that's obviously my passion. That's obviously where I wanted the business to be. But if it isn't, but I still want a successful one, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Big time, so. Okay, finally, as we're going into the new year, yeah. what's your new year resolution for 2020? Putting you on the spot. Fucking hell, yeah, you didn't, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't give me a heads up on that, did you? Um, I don't really do it. Oh, uh, I just it's have I got one for the year I don't I don't know I think it's just um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll tell you what with, with, the, with the new restaurant I think it's important I think a lot of people can get really sort of worked up with it and stressed and everything about it I think for me I think I'm a, I'm a sort of guy I always take a step back I, I sort of evaluate every situation I, I, for me I sort of make the decision that, 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 that sort of best benefits me or the situation I think for me just to, just to have that mentality into something I've never 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 encountered before with a new restaurant I think for me my focus is the restaurant and, the fa- and my family, fa- fa- family, and family, and family in the restaurant is my focus, and for, for me to, in- to to ensure that I, I keep that, you know, keep that nice and level, yeah. and ensure that we, we we sort of go with a real open mind, accept change, accept that there's going to be sort of roadblocks along the way, and just uh, and just ensure that we do it in the be- most most unstressful sort of way possible, um, and, and just uh, yeah, and, and just and just also be very open to sort of. Uh, be open to sort of new things coming in and and, 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 and offers and whatnot and just, just just sort of being very very approachable and acceptable of those changes happening and and, and, and yeah embracing those as well. That, that, I think that it's a new resolution. It would just to go in there with a complete open mind and ensure that it's a stress-free atmosphere as much as it can be. I'm sure it won't be all the time, but just yeah, just a very open mind and ensuring that we there's no rush with this at all. There's yeah. no rush with this opening. You know, it can open if, if, if they turn around and say it's not going to open until August. It's fine. Well, if it, if, it, if, it, if it betters for the restaurant, that's fine. I mean, ideally, I'd obviously like it open in sort of April, April, May time. But if it doesn't, it's fine. Yeah. We'll take it, take it, take it very smoothly. Like so. Well, I'll remind you of that when you're in yeah, the in the thick of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you stop your text. Same time. Oh, you're going to be stressful. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you very much, and good luck. Thank and you. I think it will be very successful. Amazing. So I'm very much looking forward to uh, coming and eating at your own 100%, restaurant. Hundred percent, mate. Absolutely, I can't wait to invite you guys. And uh, <laughs> I said, just keep your eyes open. Um, everything will be so. Once, once sort of Adams is done, uh, which is obviously less than less than less than uh, ten days away, I think uh, my focus is here. And then come the new year, yeah, you'll, you'll hear a lot of my social media about the new place. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that for sure. So thank you very much. Thank you. Amazing. We hope you enjoyed this interview, and if you have any comments feel free to tweet us or comment on the post Uh, we're making all of our interviews available to download and finally if you like what we do whether it's our podcast or our videos or even our features please head over to our patreon page and support us there